Welcome back. Welcome to our next episode. In this episode, we're starting to head south. And it's getting colder. <laughs> it's noticeably so. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so um, we'll head um, south through Northern Territory and across to Queensland, probably a little bit faster than we normally would. But we have seen most of those things, those places on the way up. So um, we'll show you some nice campgrounds along the way. Come so for the come drive. for the drive. So when we filmed the introduction to this episode, we had no idea what drama we were in for. There just happened to be incident after incident after incident. So let's stay tuned and check out what happened to us. Well, we are off to a great start here at um, Edith Falls Campground. We chose a site online that was 10 metres by 5 metres. Um, but it turns out it's 10 metres long with posts there and then it goes for 10 metres up here. So we had to try and reverse in on an angle. To do that, we ran over a stump which caused a big bang and this happened. We had to get off the road. This is the one-way road in. So... Glenn has just pushed the van that way, backed it in. He's had to back over the edge of the posts for the edge of the site. So luckily we've got a high van. You can see the post over there. That's just to give us clearance to get off the road. So there's the big puncture. Just hopefully it hasn't damaged the rim by reversing to get the van off the road. All right, now we've got over that little dilemma. We're going to take a walk to the falls. 150 metres. It's a nice surprise. I thought it was a long walk. Wow. We just heard an almighty crack come through there. A falling tree, I'd imagine. There's so many fires going on. This walking track is closed. It's very smoky. And closed for bushfire. Lucky, because that tree sounded massive. Over this way to the lower cascades and you can see all the smoke. This is a bit further on in the walk. To go around the other side, this area is closed as well. It just must be because of all the fires. This is the water entry point. But there's only one person in the water. We're guessing it's freezing. Not a bad fire. No, it's a good fire. There is a more sheltered area I think we might head off to. Ah, <laughs> oh, Glenn says this part's a bit warmer. It's a little bit more protected. Not quite as windy. There I am. Very smoky. Ah, oh, it stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. So smoky. So the island looks over the main lower pool where the falls are so here is our little map of the walking falls around Edith Falls but everything's closed except the water access points, those two points there, which are the ones we visited. The end of this bridge here is where it was closed, where we heard the cracking tree up here. 
and all the smoke was coming from right up here, helicopters buzzing around. So we can't see much more than the lower pools here today. So it looks like it's not a controlled burn. Been monitoring it closely. We need an emergency call to below. There is a cafe here at Edith Falls. So we might have to check out if there's an ice cream for Glen. We both got ice blocks today. Yeah, the new frosty fruit fruit stack. They're yummy. But I also bought a little souvenir. A painted rock. Isn't it cute? Right, the fire is getting closer. We've been told to evacuate. So Glenn's been on a walk. I've tried to find him. I've packed up as much as I can. There's flames just on the other side of the campsite there. So we're just about ready to pack up. To walk up, I mean. And everyone's leaving. Kind of excitement we don't need? Yes. So that is the campground. You can feel the heat. So most people have hooked up. They've been streaming out and we're going to. I found Glen and we've hooked up. <laughs> Helicopters, um, firefighters, sirens, um, flames. We don't even know if we can get out this way. Yes, there's an exit there because there's cars going everywhere, so. What a start to this episode, hey? That is just meters from our campsite. We don't know where we're gonna go. It's nearly five o'clock, but we're going away from the fire. So we found a gravel pit still on the Edith Falls Road, closer to the Stuart Highway, so about 20 k's from Edith Falls. So uh, we're just right here on the edge of the road. We'll be able to watch that smoke develop. Oh, that sun will probably turn red tonight too. So this is the sunset in the gravel pit. Not bad, not bad at all. Quite a lot of people pulled in who have been evacuated. Got some dinner cooking there, Glenn. Yep. Some marinated chicken. Who would know that it's been such a dramatic day? Tomorrow will be better. Yeah, tomorrow will be better. I've got to pay for that tyre. We've had a busy day today, getting the new tyre and groceries in Catherine. Look who's coming to say hello here. We're at the Mataranka Territory Manor Caravan Park in the unpowered section. It's just a big paddock we're set up over here. And um, we're going to have a little swim before sunset. So, Mataranka again. Mataranka, bit of springs. We were here just a few months ago on our way north. Yeah, we, months ago. Yeah, it was. So we're back on our way south. Wow, it's busy today. It's like standing room only. Floating in Bitter Springs yet again. Yep. It's just so nice. So busy here today. But um, we've never been at like five o'clock in the afternoon either. No. So I suppose like us, everyone's just arrived at camp. Coming for a float. Oops, I'm going to crash. Not watching what I'm doing. Just having a little crash in the pandanus here. <sighs> Look at all the kids up here on the log. Just an overnighter for us here at um, Mataranka today. So it'll just be the one swim. One float and then off in the morning. So the third thing that's happened <laughs> is that we went grocery shopping and somebody has crashed into the side of the vehicle. Rock, time, rock tamer and um, really bent the rock tamer. So they must have been 
It was only in the car park. So he's given it a good bash already. So we've had our swim, as you can see. <laughs> Peacocks supervising the work. The straightening of the rock tamer pole. Good morning. We're in Mataranka and it is freezing overnight. While we were in Darwin, I had um, removed the blanket because yeah. it was so hot. Yeah, I got two. We had to. I had to dig that out last night. Cold. Very cold. <laughs> Should have put my socks on. Now this is just a fuel station, Dunmara. We're not needing fuel, but we've heard a little rumour about vanilla slices. <laughs> really good vanilla yeah. slices and pies so you never know it's lunchtime it could be pie time could Glenn. be pie time yep could be disappointment cheesecake vanilla slices look empty there are Bits of pies. plenty of pies so you're right for a pie Glenn servo pies aren't usually this chunky I oh wow look at how big it is yep. it's buffalo in that <laughs> probably is <laughs> So, thanks to everybody that shouted at me a pie. Yes, thank you everyone who bought us pies. We were hoping it might get us a vanilla slice, but they sell out really quickly. Yeah. It got too good a reputation. Let's, let's get stuck into this pie. And meaty. It did meaty. <laughs> Found a turn off to a, a free camp that's 500 metres in on the track with lots of little offshoots. So it's always a challenge these because you don't know exactly what you're going to find and how narrow the track is going to get. There's a pelican flying around the water hole at the free camp. We're just walking around to find a, a good spot. We found a great spot here on the other side of the little pond. Over here, so there should be some good birdies tonight. Not bad for a free camp spot, eh? There's birds having baths down there in the water. Glenn's down there with his camera already. As usual, I set up, he gets out and takes photos. Did you see your, did you see him put up his middle finger? <laughs> but he knows that's how we work. Glenn's just put the drone up for a view and we saw that there'd been a car accident on the Stewart Highway. Yeah, so that smoke is rising up since he put the drone up. There was n nothing. I think he's caught that vision not very long after the accident happened. I hope everybody's all right. It's making an awful lot of smoke visible from our site. Jeez, this episode's been full of drama. We've had a, a fairly big drive day for us, 400 k's today which um, we rarely do 400 k's, but we want to try and make some distance. So we have ended up at this gravel pit. Now, it's on Wikicamps. It's listed as Excellent Gravel Pit Stop. That's its name. Simple as. Drive about 500 metres in on the track and you come across this pond here. Now, we've already had a couple of people come in since that car accident so it could get busy tonight because we have heard that the roads are closed now which is sad it's a bad sign but um a tragic accident potentially possibly but it's a nice night here for us at the excellent gravel pit stop next morning we're leaving it's about 10 o'clock it's not early our excellent gravel pit site. Well, we got out to the Stewart Highway and found out the highway's closed. So we've turned around to drive back down to our excellent gravel pit. 
and wait it out down there. At least it's nice to be with the birds down here. We've come back to the same campsite, set up again, the other side of the pond, to last night. We've got the radios on and it does sound like we're going to be here for a while. We're listening to the choppers that are flying around, their conversations, and they're trying to save lots of cattle that were in one of the trucks. So we could be having a rest day here. Well, we found out that the road's closed until at least 6 p.m. tonight. So I've decided, I've had a very busy day. <laughs> I've, um, I've made some salmon rissoles. Um, I've baked a cake. And I'm about to make a beef goulash. Now, <laughs> I've done a bit of work as well. I've done some editing as well. So I've achieved a lot. But it's nice to have food in the freezer, I think you know for drive days so this beef goulash will be going in the freezer um might be salmon patties tonight though glenn and you'll get lemon cake i'm just waiting for it to cool to put the icing on for dessert mm. <laughs> and i don't cook sweets so who knows what well, it's only cake mix who knows what it'll be like now the road um has been closed as we've said but it must have been closed north of where we are and the accident is south so we have had absolutely no traffic going past today and no other campers come in we're stuck here we're on our own it could be another wolf creek episode tonight because there's no one here yeah it's been nice we've been watching this white necked heron he's been here most of the day and his ibis mate there foraging for food there's been kites flying in and out fishing in the pond and um and of course i've had such a productive day so next morning we're on our way out and it's a good sign we've seen traffic going up and down the highway At the three ways we turned left so we will head um, into Queensland long way to get there though yeah we've um, we'll, we're gonna head for Barbary homestead tonight that's um been all done up um, we haven't been there since it's all been done up no. looks good it's so good we'll show you that uh, we did just stop for lunch at a little rest stop 41 yep. mile ball um, get sick of headwinds so. Yeah, but the 41 mile ball, Glenn. The 41 mile ball, yeah. yes, lots of finches. Lots of birds. Zebra finches everywhere. Yeah, it was a nice little stop. We've arrived here at Barclay Homestead. Camping behind the servo, but it's really done up nicely. Look at this artwork here. Bougainvillea inside a metal structure to make it look like a tree. When you arrive at the Barclay Homestead, you're greeted by these massive fighting goannas. Isn't that cool? So just walking from the campground down to happy hour, we've got some emus. Right there, the barbed wire. Yep. Happy hour every day from four till five. They get you there, because you know, that's a bit early and I suppose you stay and pay full price for your drinks after that. But that's business. So this is outside the Barclay Homestead at happy hour. So it's buzz, people everywhere. It's outside. There's even more inside. We found a nice quiet corner to drink your happy hour drinks. Cheers. Mm. New South Wales. Hey. Originally, yes. Oh, ACT! All one. Good, because sometimes I think it's all made up. There's never anyone here from ACT. <laughs> we couldn't help ourselves. We had to stay for dinner. Lucky we ordered early. This is the line for dinner now. And it's that time of the night. They're all getting a little drink from the sprinkler. Go when is it sunset? 
it's a really great place, you know. This Barclay Homestead is um, kind of in the middle of nowhere, so it's a few hundred k's from the last camp, whatever way you come. There's me moon gone. So um, it's a must stop <coughs> for an awful lot of travellers. They've got an Avery here, a red tail black. Ruby. Where's what? the red tail black? Ruby and Errol. Oh, Hello. you noisy thing. What's the matter? What do you want? Hello. Hello. Errol? Or Errol Ruby? or Ruby? Errol, eh? You're jealous. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Oh. They're, they all want the attention. Yeah, they do. Welcome back to camp after dinner and the show. And look at the full moon there over the van. Welcome to Queensland. Hello, Queensland. <laughs> Three hours of pretty well nothingness yep. from Barclay Homestead. There's nothing in Queensland, as you can see. No, the landscape really changes on this drive from Barclay. Um, really sparse and barren. Hmm. But yes, here we are in Queensland, not far now from our next free camp. Not far. So this is our next camp spot. Isn't this beautiful ride right on the river? Birds galore. Pelicans just strolling past there at the moment. We've been here 10 minutes and oh, less. Glenn was gone with his camera within minutes. Um, yeah, there's lots to see here. You're going to love it. So are we. Here's Glenn. He's found his seat on the van. Good to have a break from the, the headwinds that we've been putting up with the last couple of days. Three days? Yeah, the yeah. fuel economy has been shocking, hasn't it? It has, yeah. We haven't got very far on our tanks. I think we've used, I was working it out last night, 30, about 30, 35% more fuel than we normally would. Oh, yeah, I would think so, yeah. Yeah, with those headwinds. So we go from about 16 litres per 100 to 20. 22. Or, even yeah. there. So, nice rest day with all these birds. Yeah. It's beautiful. We're running out of real estate. But... No, we're not. We'll keep going around the bend. Don't no, worry about okay. that. I'll get wet. No, you won't. <laughs> Into the muddy section now. But, um, it's just so beautiful with the light. I'm going to keep getting muddy shoes. We've left Camerwheel on our way to Mount Isa. This is a World War II rest stop, so we're interested to find out what the history is. We found uh, the info. Why yeah, so it's all about the Mount Isa to Camerwheel Road that was built during World War II. So, um, 
by the end of 1941 there was a thousand vehicles a day after they built the road. So that's what it's all about. So this road was really needed. It was an alternative to the Stuart Highway. To get all the vehicles through to Darwin for the war, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, we'll wrap this episode up here. Yeah, we're in Mount Isa now. Um, and the whole point of this episode was just to show you the route um, leaving Northern Territory and entering Queensland. So once you get to Mount Isa, there's so many different directions you can go. Mm. So, um, Where yeah. is your oyster? <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah so we'll wrap this episode up here so um we hope you've enjoyed following our exit from nt please like and subscribe thank you that would be great and we will see you on our next episode wherever you. we end up yeah we'll see you on the road <laughs> bye